When last we left you, we had rounded up right. two of the four Looking Cuban crocodiles that are being relocated to my friend Kyle's crocodile facility. So I'll put the smallest one in these two. As you can see, I have the plywood that we screw on with air holes on either end. And it really helps to keep them calm because it's nice and dark here. Why don't you go and do that, Jerry? Say goodbye to my kids. <laughs> oh, Jesus, Jerry, can you say it later? Hi. Jerry. Put the smallest one in here and the second the smallest in here because that's shorter. Hey, Kyle, yeah. sure, he needs that. Yeah, buddy, start February 1st. Get one ready. Oh, yeah. screwing the plywood. To the corrugated plastic drainage ditch. All right, pretty good. Which one you want to put in? Oh, that's it. 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 Okay, so we're going back in for the two bigger Cubans. We're going to bring Anthony's pickup back with us because it's a long walk, but I figured now's a good time to meet Jerry. Uh, how long have you been involved in reptiles, Jerry? 1972, I got my first snake. Oh my gosh, and how long have you had the crocodiles here? Uh, I got my first crocodile, I think, back in 76 at a pet store, and they told me it was a caiman. Okay. I think I paid about $5 for it, and I put it in my basement, and over the years it grew to seven and a half feet, and I figured out, well, this isn't a caiman. Turned out to be a Nile crocodile. And hmm. so ever since then, I've been hooked on it. Yeah, that's really, really cool. But uh, as we said earlier, he's uh, moving on. He wants to downsize the crocodilian collection. And so that's where Kyle comes in. Hey, Kyle. What's up? Kyle's looking very bright and sunny on this overcast freezing day. Freezing. Freezing. <laughs> anyway, I'm kind of glad it's cold because it's going to make getting the rest of these A lot easier crocs. with these temperatures. Right. If it was 90 degrees. Yeah, we'd be in trouble. So we're going to get these guys, load them up. We'll see you in the Cuban crocodile enclosure. The big ones. No more carrying for a half a mile. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, a lot of work to do. <laughs> Come on, Lonnie. Come on, buddy. I'm in. Got another 30 feet to go. We'll see you in the Cuban crocodile enclosure. El Grande <laughs> Cuban Crocodilo. Bad Spanish. <laughs> Good portion of my life has been all about action still holds true. But now I pour all that time and energy into wildlife conservation, education, and the pursuit of knowledge. This is Camp Tenor. All right, folks. So like I said earlier, this time we're going in for much larger Cuban crocs. And of course, bigger croc means more power and more danger. So we've really got to be on our toes. Really, who needs to travel abroad to get into the jungle? Have I mentioned that Jerry does not like yard work? Not only is this habitat location overgrown, but it is also home to other really large crocs. Oh boy. All right guys, check this out. On the opposite side of the bank here, directly across from us. Who's that? that? That's the Nile. That's the Nile, okay. Sorry, I was going to say, that looked like a real big human. So we're going to set up the noose again, and then it's going to be all hands on deck, and again, we're going to be just listening to the instruction of Lonnie McCaskill. Yeah, it's he may have done this one or four hundred times in various locations. Somewhere in between, yeah. But this is a different ball game with this guy, no? This is absolutely, uh, this is a different ball game, guy. Now, we do have temperature on our side and the animal is out of the water. The worst thing that can happen is that animal get in the water. It just complicates the whole catch. Does that mean if they had their, um, so, I think he's going to try to noose him. I would like to, uh, <laughs> I'll get between the water so it doesn't go that way. That sounds like just, a great I'm gonna idea. Get, I'm going to get You in. get between the water and the crocodile. <laughs> I'm going to get in between. <laughs> Why don't you just get behind me because okay. I'm going to come in from behind. Hopefully she'll turn yeah. and open. I can put this on her. Uh, okay. And then I'll jerk and then get in front of her. Okay. So. All right. So anyway, like I was saying, Lonnie has uh, traveled all over the world doing crocodile conservation. Yeah, so it's really it fun to finally get him on the show, number one. We hang out a lot. He's also a big tortoise guy, member of the Turtle Survival Alliance, one of the board members. Are you ready? Okay. Let's, let's see what happens here. But again, you guys see how slow she is. My fault. Yeah, well, not that slow. Watch. 
Oh, you want me to grab him? You want to jump or kick him? No, I'll watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. I got it. Come on, I got it. I got it right yeah, there. Alright, Lon, you're up. Nice job. Well, get the uh, hold on, hold on. Okay. Try to get that out of my mouth. Yep. Yeah. Oh, nice. Awesome. Got it. Look out. Good okay. job, man. Okay. Hey, tape. I got it. You got it. Where's it at? In your pocket. Yep. I'm gonna. I'm now gonna put my hand in your pocket, buddy. <laughs> it's only for the tape. I promise. Just PVC pipe. Hold on. Does Hold on now. I'm not doing good. But here we go. Ready? No. Not set yet. Okay. It is wild. And when in doubt, go two more. It is crazy how strong they are. Not bad. Yep. There you go. Okay. Well, crocodile number three caught up. Now we just have to figure out how to get the other big guy out while this very large Nile crocodile gives us the stare down. Luckily for us, the other Cuban croc decided to get out of the water on his own. So this job should be a lot less complicated. But of course, you just never know how these things will go. All right, is somebody gonna get between, behind me between the water? I don't have a pole. Fred's, Fred Fred does. Fred's got it. All right, I'll just back up. I'll back you up the rope. Um, all right, man, this is it. This Are we ready? She's active. Let's get her. Let's get her. She ain't going to go too far. She is going to come right at you now. Oh man, we are so lucky, guys. You have no idea. Wait, let's get her with yeah, her. Yeah, no, no, no. Get the rock. Get that. All right, hold on. Stop. I got it. I don't want to hurt her face. I got her. I got her. Hold on, hold on. Don't wait, man. I'm going to give her some slack. All right, want me to take the rope? No, not yet. Stop being that rock. That's all right. That's all right. I don't know. Do you want it? She's going to roll. Go ahead. Ready? Good man. Good man. Here you go. I got it. I got it. I got it. That's the tape. All right, guys. Oh, the tape. Yeah, I got that. I'm very useful today. Good job. Cuban number four. Hang on, I'm gonna cut the rope, so we'll just tape her up like that. Ready? Yep. Good job. Oh yeah. You alright? Just a splinter. This is the one you want to do a couple of extra laps around. Okay. I'd say so. <laughs> Raise up just a little bit more. I'm getting over. <laughs> well, luckily, oh, she's Watch trying. Yeah. Well, that is the fourth crocodilio. Can, can yeah. I pull that out for me? Yeah, no problem, buddy. It's a little briar. See that? That's the uh, land. Yeah, land land tooth. A little briar got in his uh, precious finger. Yep. Yeah. All right. We're just gonna cut this, and when we release the Crocs later on, she'll open her mouth and get rid of that rope. Look at that. Look at nice. That. Yeah. They're like fangs. Those look pretty impressive. That's dude. the thing with the Cubans; it's almost like a fang yeah. instead of a normal tooth, where it's straight down. This actually curves back. It's kind of remarkable because they're a lot like a Komodo dragon's teeth. They're facing back, so when they grab a predator, as a predator struggles, it's just going to cause more damage. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Now these guys are from uh, the Zapata swamps. Now, is it true? Some theorize that they're kind of aggressive, or I, I hesitate to say aggressive, but they're actually animals that are just programmed to snap at whatever walks by because there's not a lot of food source there. Well, very opportunistic. Okay. You know, uh, you know that's where you can swap with the aggression from. They're opportunistic. They're going to grab the first meal that they uh, can, be it a fish. Um, a rabbit or whatever that comes near the water. All right. And they also are a very terrestrial species. I mean, you can easily find these at night walking around the forest. <laughs> well, well, if you're not looking for them, it could be quite startling, I would imagine, for somebody. And I mean, this animal was qu kind of far from the water anyway. So in the new enclosures, uh, they're being put today in some temporary enclosures. But Kyle, you were talking about really creating large enclosures with a lot of land. Yeah. Uh, um, people. As you know, I mean, with the swamp, there's a lot of them in high density areas. So uh, they do well in groups. So I actually have a, uh, I'm gonna be building a three acre enclosure. So the cool. lake alone is two acres, plus an acre around for land area. All right, man. They also hunt in groups too. All right, ready? 
yeah. Careful now. You all right? Yeah. I think we need a lot of muscle on the front end. Yeah, hold on, I'm coming. I'm coming, buddy. Don't get hit with that now, bud. You're kind of getting up in the weeds, though. Get out of them prickers. Well, I'm more worried about the teeth on my pal here. Oh, hold on. All right, you let go. You let go. Nate? Nate, yeah, you get out. I'm all right. No, you're not. You're twisted up. We can't do anything with you there. You can't do any more good there. Get out of there! <laughs> I got okay. the PVC if we need it for coffee. Uh, all right. Somehow, we now have to get Swing her over if you can. Keep pushing her this way. Oh, oh, get push this? A leg. Don't get on her there, you there you go. There you go. There you go. No, I, think that's, um, I don't like being caught. Like okay. That. All right, now what? All right, get on that side of her. Get on the right side yes, of her. Sir. Kyle, you got the head? Yep. Okay. What do we do? Jerry, get one more person. Anthony, can you get back here on the back leg? Watch this pick again. And as we come up, I'm going to go around like that. Okay. So if the head starts going, get you and Kyle, no, you oh, and Kyle okay. hang on to the head. Hang on the head. I'll okay. get the head alone. Okay, y'all ready? Yeah. We're going to go one, two, three, up. One, two, three, up. <laughs> Good. Hell. Whew. All right, mate. We're going this way. She's cool. Like, in a cold way. <laughs> She's cool in a cold kind of way. Let's go this way. Well, I don't know why uh, Jerry doesn't do any of this work. <laughs> yeah, what's going on here? <laughs> Somebody's got to supervise this work. Thanks to Jerry's aversion to hard labor, our long walk is littered with overgrown vines and branches, which makes carrying this heavy crock twice as hard. Thanks, buddy. Everyone all right? We, we got a lot to get through here, guys. And she's building up. Yes. Watch your step here, some roots sticking up. Right here. Watch your step here, fellas. Stepping over. Over. Almost there. Not to put the slide. Watch her, watch her, watch her. Yeah. The other one out. Yeah. Oh. You alright, Pearl? Yeah, yeah. Bet you never had your ass slapped by a big Cuban. <laughs> Bam! <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord. Can't Get it down, bro. Put her down. Let her calm down for a minute. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Whew! Oh right. God! Well, Let's get the other drive down yeah. here again. That's okay. for sure. Let's do it. That's no joke, huh? Jim? That's no joke. Yeah. Even a cold croxicle yeah. is powerful. That's it, boys and girls. We just load these up into the U-Haul. Bet you wouldn't think a year was a U-Haul filled with crocodiles driving next to you on the highway. Yeah, nope. no one would know what's inside. Huh? Anyhow, hang on there. We're waiting. So we're gonna get these loaded up into the U-Haul and do the three hour trip back down south and get them put in their temporary enclosure. Okay. One, two, three. Watch your, watch your leg. I got, her. I got her. You should get up off now. Push, push her if you can. Oh, she is a swarmy little thing. Okay. Somebody want to get up there while I drive? Yeah, I got you. I'll get up there. Trust me, guys. We're not doing anything these crocs can't handle. Yeah, you need a sledgehammer to hit it. I'm sure it's no fun to have me sitting on their back, but it's for their own good right now. ready to drive. So they don't hurt themselves, and they don't hurt us. Ready? See at the road. We got a long way to go. It may not look like it, but time is of the essence for us. We need to get these two crocs packed up and in the U-Haul with the other two and raise daylight on our three-hour trip home. As you can see, we ended up making it, but just barely. Now we truly need to move quickly because I really don't want to be doing this in the dark. We have no lighting out here. All right, well, we made it back. <laughs> and uh, always feels longer coming home, doesn't it? Yeah. I made, he, he's upset at me because I made him stop because we had to use the bathroom. We don't have much light left, so we really got to get these guys out and get them in the enclosure. And let me be the first to tell you also, I know all of you out there in YouTube land, when we first put the Nile crocodiles way back in 2015 and uh, season two, a lot of you guys were like, oh, it's just a hole. Well, guess what? He dug these holes two days ago. So you can see back there, uh, the enclosures aren't fully done, but we needed to get those animals out of northern Florida or north central Florida because it's just too cold up there. So our primary uh, reason for getting them so quickly was because we're in a cold snap. Got to get them out before they're dead. Doesn't look pretty, 
but it'll be fine for him. Did someone bring a knife to get the tape off? No, I have a knife. Okay, but perfect. I need to off. Make sure she don't go in that water. Cut the rope, uh, the yep. tape, and then I'll get up off. I can her. peel it. You want Are you sure? Yep. Just cut it. All right. Ready? Just do that. Yeah, I'm ready. She's not going to do much, I don't suspect. Be careful. I cut it. All right. One. Jesus. All three. <laughs> that was not the prettiest Whoa. execution. Go the other way. Other way, Mama. Whoa. Want me to help you? Nope. <laughs> Wait a second! He's the one grabbing you, sister! Jesus! <laughs> That's a Cuban. That's a cold Cuban, but it's working. I like the hot Cubans. <laughs> Holy smokes. Alright, so the reason we're doing this, guys, is we actually want yeah, her to go in the water. Because the water... I don't like being pinned over here. The water's warm. Uh, it's probably somewhere around 65 degrees right now. The water's somewhere close to 70. So we want to get her in because it's been such a such a day for her. We wanted to feel to find that that water. All right, we'll leave her be. Yeah, we have another she one. She should walk in. Yep. All right, here's hoping. Make sure she doesn't go to the left. Oh, God, that's that's sure. Yeah. That that's. Ready guys? So we oh, are seriously yeah, losing yeah. light now and still need to be extremely okay. careful. We don't want her to shake her head while we are carrying her and possibly get our hands caught on one of those exposed fangs. We just want to get this croc yeah. into the water safely for her sake and obviously right. our own. Let's go to the left here. Yeah. Let's see if Kyle can prod her in. See, and that's the thing with Cubans. You know, other crocs are gonna go right for the water. Cubans stand their ground, even when they're cool like this. See this, it's actually working against us. Jesus, Kyle. <laughs> Hold on. Wow, that's still an impressive animal. There we go. Good job, hey. Fred. Good old Fred. Done deal. Well, you don't want to fall in there. Come on, girl. Come on. I want you in. Oh, you don't like that very much. Well, and that's... I think I'll listen to her. <laughs> Labor B. Yeah. She'll go in eventually. It's not terribly cold out right now. Nah, she'll be out. Alright. So a fun day, nobody got hurt. Kyle got the crocs out back down here. It was a good job. Thanks again for always hey, thanks letting for the help, me. man. No problem. I want to say thanks to Fred Grunwald for helping out. Lonnie McCaskill, John Heidecker, Kim from Bush Wildlife. Hi Kim, thanks so much. And uh, Anthony Furlong. We had a great day. We'll see you next Tuesday. Another episode. The mosquitoes are killing me. Let's go. <laughs> How are you getting bit? You're covered? I'm covered. Yeah. Well, I got ears. <laughs>